Hi, this is Ahmed Alokaili and Manos Brilakis presenting case 243 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case that shows combined treatment of a CTO and a bifurcation. The patient was a young gentleman who presented with exertional angina. He had normal systolic function and he was found to have ischemia on the anterior wall along with an LAD CTO. The LAD was occluded right after the takeoff of a large diagonal branch. It did have a blunt proximal cap, and there were some septal collaterals filling the mid and the distal LAD. These are different views obtained with femoral and radial axis. Again, we have a blunt but well-defined proximal cap, and then there's the occlusion, and there's some diffuse disease into the mid LAD. So we have a blunt proximal cap, length of about 25 millimeters, good quality distal vessel, and then we have septal collaterals from the PDA. So the plan here was to start with undergrade wiring attempts. If that failed, to go retrograde because of the large uh, good septal collaterals. And if that failed, use undergrade dissection reentry. When it comes to LAD, it may actually be best to use retrograde to minimize any potential side branch loss. So we tried with undergrade wiring. We used uh, a standard Corsair microcaster, but the issue we had is that all the wires wanted to slide into the diagonal branch. So we wanted to have a little more angulation directing the guide wire into the proximal cap. And to achieve this, we used the Venture microcatheter, which is angulated and provides very strong support, and along with the Gaia next to guide wire. And after doing that, we were able to advance the wire along the course of the LED. But unfortunately, as we see from right coronary injection, the wire is in the extra plaque position. We did a brief attempt to try to redirect the guide wire, but it remained extra plaque. So based on our original plan, we decided to switch to the retrograde approach at this point. We used uh, a Corsair Excess, and this is a Sion Black guide wire that it advanced, usually the beginning part from the PDA to the LED is harder, and after that part is navigated, it's easier to advance the guide wire more proximally, and sure enough, the wire here is going all the way to the LED. And actually, to our pleasant surprise, the same Sion Black guide wire easily went from the distal true lumen into the proximal true lumen and into the undergrade guide catheter. We had actually used the guide extension because we want to make sure we do not have re-entry close to the left main that could compromise the integrity of the left main, but the wire went easily. Still, before doing any PCI, we want to confirm where is the entry point of the wire into the true lumen. Because, again, if it is in the left main or close to the bifurcation of the left main, that can be devastating and lead to, to loss of branches. But again, the wires were in the true lumen uh, inside the LED before getting into the left main. So we externalized, and um, then we need to advance an undergrade guide wire all the way to the distal LAD. So we used a, a dual lumen microcaster, a Suzuki, and then advanced a, a workhorse guide wire all the way to the distal LAD. Predilated, um, and our plan was to actually just do provisional standing. And of course, before removing the retrograde, uh, before deploying the stand, the retrograde gear needs to be removed. So we were ready here to remove the retrograde gear and deploy the stand, but then we realized that the lesion in the diagonal was actually more severe than we thought, and it was longer than we thought. And this was a fairly large diagonal. So we decided to change our treatment for stents from a provisional to a two-stent uh, technique with a DK crush. We removed the retrograde gear, we predilated the side branch, advanced the side branch stand, deployed it, then it was crushed, we rewired did the first kissing balloon inflation, deployed the stand in the main vessel, did the proximal optimization technique, and then rewired the diagonal branch that um, actually was uh, not too hard, even using a workhorse guide wire, despite the angulation. And then... Um, after um, rewiring, then uh, we were ready to do the second kissing um, balloon inflation. And then final proximal optimization technique. 
there was uh, some area of dissection proximal to the stent, so we covered that with an additional drug eluting stent. And this was the final result with a nice flow into the LAD. We do have preservation of the septal branches, and we have an excellent result also in the diagonal branch. And this was confirmed using intravascular imaging. So multiple lessons from this case. The first one is what to do if there is an angulated takeoff of the CTO. So the options are to use an angulated or a dual loop microcatheter or use wires with large bands. But I believe that it is better to use an angulated microcatheter because then you can still keep a, a short, a short, small band, a CTO band on the guide wire and have better penetration capacity. In this case, the wire went extra plaque. When that happens, there are multiple options. One is to redirect the wire or leave it in place and do parallel wiring or use Stingray for the entry or go retrograde. In this case, uh, we decided to go retrograde because we did have good septal collaterals. But in other cases, either parallel wiring or uh, wire direction or Stingray could have been used. When we did uh, the retrograde crossing, it was actually easy crossing from uh, the distal true to the proximal true lumen. But before placing stents, we need to confirm that there is no re-entry close to the left main. Because if the retrograde wire had re-entered into the true lumen close to the left main bifurcation, that could result in loss of multiple branches, including the circumflex. There was a stand dissection, stand edge dissection that was standard. And then uh, when there is a complex bifurcation, sometimes it is best to use a two-stand strategy. Here we used DK crash, and we had a very nice result. The patient did have remarkable improvement in symptoms. His exertional engine are resolved, but he also felt much more energy and was able to do much more than was able to do before. And this is something we commonly see, especially in young patients. Uh, he was 53 years old, so fairly young and had a lot of potential. But because this happened gradually, he was not himself aware about how much he had been limited by the CTO of the lady. Thank you.